Lee Strobel's rejection of Darwinism and materialistic science was also based on the large body of positive evidence for intelligent design. Evidence he first confronted in the science of cosmology, which explores the origin of the universe. How did the universe begin? What is its source? Few questions have generated as much controversy through the centuries or inspired as many impassioned opinions. I interviewed William Lane Craig, a philosopher who has devoted much of his career to the study of cosmology and the question of origins. From ancient Greek materialism at the time of Plato and Aristotle up through 19th century idealism, the prevailing view was that the universe is eternal that the universe never began to exist, that the universe as a whole is, as it were, a static, timeless entity. This belief in an eternal, unchanging universe, for centuries a pillar of Western cosmology, was unexpectedly challenged in 1915 by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. Einstein's equations implied a startling possibility. The cosmos was not static but instead existed in a continual state of either contraction or expansion. Einstein did not like the idea that the universe was dynamic at all. In fact, like almost all scientists at the time, in the early 20th century, he assumed the universe was static and eternal. What's interesting and ironic is that he thought he had made some kind of mistake in his equations for the general theory of relativity. Uh, but a few years after he developed the theory, a Belgian astronomer named Lemaitre developed a model based upon his equations, which again predicted that the universe is in a continual state of expansion. In 1929, theoretical predictions were confirmed with empirical data. At the Mount Wilson Observatory overlooking Los Angeles, astronomer Edwin Hubble studied light from distant galaxies. Hubble determined that galaxies beyond our Milky Way were moving away from us at a speed proportional to their distance from the Earth. The more distant the galaxy, the faster it is receding. Hubble's landmark discovery led most astronomers and physicists, including Albert Einstein, to a similar conclusion. If the universe is continually expanding, then at earlier points in its history, it must have been smaller and denser. I think a good way to visualize this is to imagine that the history of the universe has somehow been photographed and made into a movie that we could play on a projector. As the projector runs forward, we watch the universe as it continually expands. But if the projector were to be stopped and were switched into reverse to make the movie run backward, then instead of watching the galaxies move farther and farther apart from each other, we'd see them draw closer and closer together. As you trace this expansion back in time, the universe grows denser and denser and denser until finally the entire known universe is contracted down to a state of infinite density which marked the beginning of the universe. At this point, which cosmologists call the singularity, all matter and energy, physical space and time themselves came into being. This literally represents the origin of the universe from nothing. So the startling implication of Hubble's discovery was the temporal finitude of the universe, that the universe had an absolute beginning at some point in the finite past. During the second half of the 20th century, other discoveries also pointed to a universe with a beginning. These images of the cosmic microwave background radiation document what most scientists now believe is the remnant heat generated during the universe's early history. Background radiation is found throughout the cosmos and indicates its expansion from a sudden, perhaps violent, moment in time. 
This evidence for a finite universe has reaffirmed the conclusion of an ancient philosophical deduction. It is called the Kalam cosmological argument. The Kalam argument is deceptively simple in its formulation. It consists of basically three steps. Premise one is that whatever begins to exist has a cause. Something cannot come into being uncaused out of absolutely nothing. Premise two is that the universe began to exist. And the remarkable development that has occurred is that for the first time, we now have solid scientific evidence for the truth of that second premise that the universe began to exist. And from those two premises, it follows logically, therefore, the universe has a cause of its existence. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause of its existence. And that points to a reality beyond the universe, a transcendent reality beyond space and time, and therefore non-physical and immaterial, which created the universe out of nothing and brought it into being. The implications of a finite universe, coupled with other discoveries of modern cosmology, have led many scientists to unmistakably theological conclusions. There is no ground for supposing that matter and energy existed before and were suddenly galvanized into action. It is simpler to postulate creation ex nihilo, divine will constituting nature from nothingness. The chain of events leading to man commenced suddenly and sharply at a definite moment in time in a flash of energy and light. We can't understand the universe in any clear way without the supernatural. Supernatural creation of the universe in a flash of energy and light. You know, it sounds an awful lot like the first chapter of Genesis to me. Today, the vast majority of even the most skeptical astronomers and cosmologists believe that the universe had a beginning. This belief isn't based on some theological doctrine. It's based on scientific evidence. And I think if we follow the evidence wherever it points, it points clearly and powerfully and persuasively in the direction of a creator.